Hello, and welcome to this webinar entitled Simplify Shipping and Compliance Processes with BlueJ Gateway for D365FO. My name is Jason Chung, and I will be presenter for this webinar. Before we start looking into the slides, I just want to notice, uh, just wanted to notify everybody that there is a chat area. So if you do have any questions during the presentation, please feel free to chat away your questions. And we have panelists that will be on the lookout and responding as fast as possible to your inquiries. Also note, if uh, you do have more extensive questions and that you'd like to set up some time with us, we'll uh, gladly do so. So please reach out to us and we will set up the appropriate channels to do so. All right, that being said, let's get started. So the title and the uh, description um, talk about simplifying the shipping in the compliance processes by automating uh, a lot of the pr processes, um, streamlining, and, um, and saving costs. So hopefully by uh, the end of this presentation, throughout the presentation, I'll be able to pinpoint some of these things and see and hopefully show you uh, where the value is uh, in the gateway for D365FO product. The agenda for today is we'll just talk briefly about uh, the two companies involved into this gateway product. There is BlueJ Solutions and there is NMB Solutions. So we'll talk about those companies and what the relationship is between the two. And then we'll just uh, have a little bit of a introduction of what Gateway is, and then we'll dive into the three um, different product suites that compose the Gateway, which is either the Gateway to Parcel, Gateway to DPS, the Night Party Screening, and Gateway to TMS. Again, my name is Jason Chung. I am Director of Technical Services for NMB Solutions. I've been with the company for eight years now. I am PMP certified and MBA candidate. My uh, background is uh, around software development, supply chain, and ERP. I have experience in consulting, pharmaceutical, and discrete manufacturing. I've put up a couple of links here if you want to reach out to me. It'd be my pleasure to say hi to you. So how do we pitch the companies, right? So let's talk about BlueJ a little bit. BlueJ Solutions is a global supply chain company. They are worldwide. They are one of the most renowned supply chain, global supply chain software platform company in the industry. So they have deep domain experience in transportation and customs. And then MB is a sole distributor for AX and D365 solutions offered by BlueJ. What is an MB Solutions? Well, we've, you know, we're founded in 1998 as the first Exapta value-added reseller in Canada. We did the very first North American implementation of Exapta. Um, so we are a Microsoft partner, and um, and we've been doing uh, this business for the entire part of NMB Solutions existence. So that is what we do. So we take BlueJ Solutions platforms and, and engines and we integrate them, we embed them into product suites that we offer to the Microsoft community through D365 for finance and operations. So simply put, um, NMB Solutions is the Ferrari, and BlueJ Solutions is the engine under the hood. So Gateway is in two part, a uh, rebranding of uh, some of the existing products into uh, a more consolidated and more unified approach. Uh, and, and the second part of that is actual interoperability between the products. 
So there is a gateway to parcel, gateway to denied party screening, and a gateway to transportation management for shippers. So let's get into it. And we'll start with the gateway to parcel. So here we're talking about small packages and less than truckloads. When we talk about uh, small packages, we're thinking about FedEx, UPS, DHL, right? Um, obviously, Hermes, TNT, Toll uh, in, in Europe. But really, the platform allows for any of them any of the supported carriers and any of the non-supported carriers as well. There's an onboarding platform for carriers that are not even supported yet through uh, the Blue Jay Parcel platform. So to give you an idea where activities are happening and how the product works, it's important to know that in this uh, product offering, the, the Blue Jay, the gateway to Parcel product, uh, activities are happening within your ERP system. So it's happening in your D365 FO uh, screens. Everything is happening directly through there. So when uh, um, requests are being processed, so an order is being processed as a shipment and it's being packaged, uh, all of that is, is packed into a request that is sent uh, over to an Azure cloud hosted Blue Jay parcel server, and then that uh, parcel server either uh, processes the request directly or sends out the request to one of those carriers, receives a response back, and provides a response back to D365. It's the gateway to parcel's job to then take that message and um, save and produce the documents that are required to support your shipment. We're talking about labels, we're talking about documents like commercial invoices or certificates of origin. Uh, we're talking about storing additional data like the tracking number, the charges, and any relevant data that your shipment needs to go to its final destination. This product is the oldest um, product from the product lines that NMB Solution has to offer to the marketplace. So there are many screens, many things to talk about. I chose to focus in on this particular piece. It's called the packing workbench. So this is a replacement for the standard pack station in advanced warehousing uh, for D365FO, but it does 100% what the pack station does, plus so much more. So I just wanna take this screen uh, split it up apart a little bit. I want to give you guys a little bit of focus so that you can look at stuff and I can talk about it and then we'll move on. So the first thing to split here are four distinct quadrants of operations. So this is where the shipper, the packer, is going to spend most of his time. He receives packages, he receives stuff he needs to pack. He's got a pack station, he's got his printers, he's got his uh, scales for weights, and he, he's got all of his equipment all around him. He's got items and boxes coming to him. He's packing items into boxes and he's shipping boxes out, putting the stickers, the, the shipping labels on, and sending them out. So the top left quadrant is all about the shipment. It's the shipment header information. So. What's this? What's the shipment ID? What's the order number? Who is it going to? Which warehouse is coming from? What carriers are we using for this? And all of that stuff. At the bottom left, we have the line details. What needs to be packed? What needs to get out the door? On the top right, we have the container, container header. So all of the boxes or pallets or whatever container uh, format is uh, used to pack. And at the bottom right, we have the contents within the container. Right. So if we look at um, the, in the middle left corner there, we have all of the different stakeholders. So stakeholders relevant to the shipment, who cares about the shipment, right? So you have where it's going, who's, who's the final destination, 
we have the carrier details and services. We have the importer, exporter, broker. That's if you're doing international shipments. And we have blind shipments, or sometimes it's called drop shipping. That's uh, when you are shipping uh, on behalf of somebody else. If we look at the uh, in the bottom middle, we have some of the workflows. Quick pack, pack, pack all. We'll talk a little bit more on details about those different workflows and how they operate. And on the far right, we have uh, container management. New boxes, remove boxes, get weight if you have integrated scales, shipping pallet functionality. <clears throat> the action ribbon up on top displays a plethora of other additional uh, actions that you can operate here, uh, such as rate shopping. So rate shopping uh, with this product not only allows you to service shop, so service shopping means uh, within UPS, you will have uh, ground, you will have expedited, you will have saver, you'll have many different service types and you can rate shop against those. So you can know which is the cheapest or what is the fastest or what is the fastest, cheapest options, right? All of these are some things that you can do, but you can also shop against uh, the carriers. So you can, you can put uh, FedEx up against UPS and then see who's cheapest. Another unique feature of the rate shopping is we actually have the ability to rate shop against different shipment types. So you can cross rate shop against a parcel versus an LTL. This is interesting, right? Because uh, some scenarios where you're preparing a parcel shipment, the, the weight thresholds are very close to what an LTL would be versus what a parcel would be. And depending where that shipment is going, there might be a benefit to your business to actually use an LTL carrier rather than use uh, your regular parcel carrier, for example, or the opposite is true as well. So this is where we get into some of the cost benefits of the solution, right? Uh, so following up, there's updates, so you can send shipment, you can void ship and post uh, in a single action. If we keep going, we can see there's an update return. So you can process returns. So this is also an interesting uh, component of the product. Now with uh, the, the reality of, of Amazon uh, providing uh, free shipping and then providing uh, stress-free return capabilities, more and more businesses need to be competing with this model. And this product allows you to do so, so you can uh, preemptively print a return label and include it within the package itself. So if there is something uh, the your end customer can ultimately uh, peel off the return label, put it back on the box and then just ship it back to you. Or there are some, some scenarios where you actually want the container to come back. And in this instance, you would use uh, return labels directly from here. Posting the packing slip, and then printing or reprinting supporting documents for your shipment. And finally, looking at the logs or the shipment details. This you will be able to see your uh, tracking numbers and charges for the, for the shipment itself. And then the final area to focus on before we move on is the uh, scanner friendly. So the first part here is the pack station ID that you see there. Uh, this gives the ability to actually configure as many uh, pack stations as uh, your business requires. And each pack station is then mapped to all of the physical peripherals. So be it uh, two, three, four different printers, uh, a scanner, a, uh, uh, a scale for weight definitions. So all of those you would associate to a pack station ID. And then this pack station ID can be linked to your user, so the actual packer. And if he moves uh, to a different station, he can just change his station 
and then he's just operating within that 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 pack station ID. The field right beside it is uh, what's scanner friendly is the barcode input. So barcode input uh, actually gives the ability to uh, to do keyboardless and mouseless interactions. So that means if you have a uh, cheat sheet that has a bunch of predefined barcodes on it, uh, that is, you know, maybe a sheet that's uh, that's parked at the sh station or, or it's something that he, the shipper carries with him, then he just needs to scan the sheet and then he can create a new box, he can pack all, he can send shipment, and with uh, just a few scans, he can actually process shipments without even touching uh, keyboard or mouse or even being in front of the computer. So that's some very powerful things right there. And this touches on, you know, automating, streamlining, making your process more efficient. You don't need to have anybody clicking anywhere, going to somewhere, changing values, manually inputting stuff. They can just use a scanner, two, three scans, and they're done. All right, moving on. As I've mentioned, uh, this is one of the biggest uh, product uh, suites that we have, um, this um, gateway to parcel product. So there's a lot of features. I don't wanna go through all of them, but you can see these are some of the main features that are supported within the product. As promised, I would uh, give a little more details around the workflows. So we do support a bunch of different workflows and workflows essentially means how do you pack? How do you ship? And what is relevant for your business, right? Because, uh, because yeah, maybe maybe you do uh, pack serial numbers, and, and but maybe you don't, and it's okay. This is this this gives flexibility to the system to operate the way you want to operate. So I'll just talk about a couple of them. So the pack all. This is our quick ship method. This is our fastest shipping process. Uh, this is the one that I described with the barcode. You can barcode it or you don't need to barcode it. You can also use keyboard and mouse and, and just process it this way. It's essentially a three-step process. Scan your document, make a pack all action, and ship it. That produces the label, gets the charges, the tracking number, the URL to follow up, and you're done. <clears throat> I apologize. Second one to talk about is the quick pack. So quick pack is a pre-configured uh, setup that you do prior to shipping uh, where you identify uh, items that uh, can be packed in a specific container type and how many items of that uh, item number can be packed into that specific container type. And then uh, when you are actually processing at the packing workbench, uh, you would use a quick pack function that the system would just then calculate and pre-build all of your boxes with the uh, appropriate item quantities um, into them. So that's also another way of quickly streamlining your process, your business processes, making things more efficient and more reliable. I want to talk a little bit about these three, um, these three points here. So uh, we do support obviously international LTL and hazardous, but uh, international, you know, so some of the things that we do uh, support uh, much more than what is uh, mentioned here, but these I do want to talk a little bit about. AES filing, uh, if your uh, shipments are coming out of the US, there is a uh, census, census Bureau requires you to, uh, to file an AES request <clears throat> to the CBP portal for, uh, for items of uh, $2,500 in value or more. So what we could see as a typical scenario in a production line, um, a shipper needs to be aware that this type of item is, you know, over $2,500. $2, uh, 
so while uh, these items come to him, uh, he would then just take them, put them aside, because that's a complete different process, and then just keep working on the production line, packing stuff as they go. And then whenever there's some, some break time, grab those items back, put them back on his pack station, go to a different website, process a uh, AES filing request, and, uh, and then wait until he receives the uh, valid information and then process that package. With Gateway for Parcel, you don't need to do that anymore. It's just fully integrated within the packing workbench, within the different workflows. The shipment is identified as an AES filing required shipment. The packer doesn't even need to do anything different from his regular process. He can pick, scan, pack, scan, and ship. And the system will automatically send a request to CBP for an ITN number, wait, receive that ITN number back, slap it on all the required documents, such as the shipping label and uh, the commercial invoice, and then we'll just simply process the package. So again, that ties into streamlining, simplifying, making things better, making things quicker. LTL shipments, same process as a as a box, same same process as a package, only instead of having one box, you'll have a, a multiple boxes that you put on a pallet. Otherwise, the process is exactly the same. And then the outcome, you would get pallet labels and a bill of a bill of lading, which is essentially a required document to follow your shipment for LTLs. Finally, a hazardous. We have a full scale featured uh, hazardous uh, module within the uh, gateway to parcel. And when we talk about uh, hazardous, obviously there's super hazardous, you know, like uh, flammable uh, radioactive explosives. But you also have lithium batteries, you know, something that you could typically find in your smartphone, right? So we have the capabilities to support that. So not only do we support that from an item perspective, so from a compliance and, and from an item management perspective, being able to manage all of your I, IATA, DOT, uh, IMO, um, all of these different regulations around hazardous, but also follow them through all the way to the shipping. So if you need an OP900 for uh, processing a FedEx shipment that has hazardous, that'll come out. So again, this ties into simplifying compliance and simplifying shipping. Don't need different systems. It all is handled through the, the one system. These are some of the other extra stuff that the product does. I really don't want to go through uh, all of these, you know, but you can think about APO, FPO, sending to military. It's always, uh, well, it's a, it's a different, it's a different process, right? It's a, it's a more complicated thing, but that's supported. Peripheral integration, future shipping, I'm not talking about back to the future kind of stuff. Uh, we don't bring you in the future to ship, but uh, we allow you to ship something as if you want to ship it in the future so that you can prepare and that you can um, do some weekend stuff but actually only ship stuff on a monday for an example these are some of the uh, more value-added features that uh, i just want to touch base on a little bit so there's a uh, order entry rating Oh, so this is the ability to rate shop, same rate shop capabilities that uh, I demonstrated or that I talked about at least uh, at the packing workbench, but from the sales order and sales quotation screens. So you have your customer rep uh, on the phone with a uh, with a customer 
and they're talking about what this customer wants to order and the customer asks, well, how much is it going to cost to ship and when am I going to receive it? So there's the ability to rate shop against that order and the CSR can just provide an answer on the phone. Now, it would also be uh, uh, noticed that, um, you know, you could say, yeah, OK, this is 35 bucks and um, and uh, customer, you know, hangs up the phone and he's got 35 bucks in his mind. But all of a sudden, uh, the actual charges is uh, 55 bucks for whatever reason. And now you have a customer that's not satisfied and uh, the overall customer experience is, is impacted by this. So part of this uh, product feature is that um, the CSR has the ability to lock down the rate that was negotiated or talked to the customer. So in that sense, um, if it's locked down at 35 bucks, that is what is gonna be charged to the customer and not the 55 that you ultimately get received as a charge. Consolidation for non-advanced uh, warehousing is uh, supported. We have a uh, full-scale wizard that, uh, that uh, proposes to you all of the available shipments that he thinks can be consolidated together to make some, uh, some, some savings. Free charge management. So uh, we talked about Amazon, free shipping. Uh, maybe you want to do free shipping. Obviously, everyone knows free shipping does not exist. Somebody's got to pay, right? This does not uh, <laughs> this does not make free shipping, but it does give you the ability to say certain thresholds I want to allow free shipping, or certain customer groups I want to allow shipping, or certain carriers or service types I want to allow free shipping. And to do that, you just identify this in, in the system, and you give it a 100% discount. Okay, but some other businesses actually make their shipping a profit center. And in this case, what you can do is say, well, anything that's UPS, you know, I get a great, I get a great rate from UPS because I do a lot of business with them. And uh, so therefore my rate is usually typically 50% off of what's, what's the regular UPS rate. So what I'm gonna do is anything that's going out from UPS, I will upcharge 20%, right? So now I'm actually I'm actually making uh, my shipping department a profit center for my business. And that also you can do. You can also do any international shipments. I wanna charge an extra handling fee of 15 bucks because it's complicated. You can do that. And the last piece here is the parcel invoice reconciliation. So this is pretty powerful as well. So for every shipment that you process through the gateway for parcel product, we register freight costs against these shipments. At the end of the month, you receive from the carrier your invoice. In electronic format, like a CSV or a flat file, you can upload that to the parcel invoice reconciliation module. What this is going to do is this is going to match up every tracking number in the system versus every tracking number on the invoice and match up against what you thought or expected to receive as a charge and what the carrier is actually charging you. You can set up thresholds. For example, you can say anything under $50, I will tolerate up to 40% uh 40% discrepancy and anything over $50 i will accept only 20% discrepancy so what this is going to do is that anything that uh is within the threshold will be automatically approved and then you will be given a list of all of the focused transactions that need your attention you were supposed to be charged a hundred bucks, but you got charged 175 bucks. Why? So now you have tools. Now you have tools to identify where are the leaks, where are the problems. They might be on your end, they might be on the carrier's end, but it gives you something to start with. 
and it gives you something to debate. So when we talk about value added, when we talk about saving costs, when we talk about streamlining the process, these are some of the very efficient tools that you need to manage your business better. Obviously, I could just list out here everything that I've already talked about, which wouldn't make much sense. So some of the value in it to think about streamlined workflows for all of your shipping and packing processes. No double entry between carrier system carriers, carrier systems and uh, D365 FO. No copy paste, no sticky labels to peel off and to stick on a pack and slip somewhere. None of that stuff. Single system, single entry. And let the data drive the process, not the user. Right. Okay. We are going to switch gears. We're going to talk about gateway to DPS. DPS stands for denied party screening. For those of you that don't know what denied party screening is, essentially it's the ability to take up a, a contact name, an address, and have it looked up against a list, well, a bunch of lists of denied parties. People that in the world we should not be doing business with because they have been deemed by authorities in different countries to be unreliable or to be bad or to be or to not be dealt with right so that's what this is so why companies would opt for this kind of a product right what's well why why would they want this and what kind of companies want this well there's the obvious right so weapons and chemicals manufacturers we have uh, legal and compliance requirements around uh, their own industry. You know, they need to make sure that they're, you know, taking all of the safety measures and precautions. They cannot be uh, caught dealing with the wrong people. So that for them is a must. There's no doubt about that. There are hazardous components part of a uh, finished goods. Here I'm talking about when you disassemble a product and there's a small component of that product that if mixed in greater quantities can be used to harm others. And then there's brand protection. So a lot of companies out there, whatever the products they're selling is not really the actual selling point of the products, right? It's the brand. The brand is the company the brand is what sells now for them protecting the brand is is the ultimate goal because if uh if, if someone uh if if they're caught selling uh to to somebody that is in the denied any of the denied party lists and that they don't have no valid reason uh, that they have not screened these people and they're just blindly selling to these people, then there could be a greater impact to the brand, ultimately to the company. And then that's much more hurtful than uh, just getting a service that will screen the different parties that you're dealing with. So these are the top three, but obviously there are a bunch of other reasons why companies would want to opt for a product like this. How does it work? Well, similar to uh, the gateway to parcel product, all of the transactions are happening within D365 for finance and operations. All of the screening happens in an automated or manual process. Everything is configurable, but they're all using the standard D365 workflows that exist within D365 today. These um, these screenings are being compiled and then sent off to 
a BlueJ DPS server, which is hosted in the cloud. And then there's a response that is received back to the uh, gateway for DPS product. The response then uh, triggers different actions within the product, depending on if it's a denied party found or no denied party found. Here are some of the settings that uh, you can see for the product. Uh, the first one on the left is the parameters to talk about screening sensitivity. The threshold there is set at 70%. You can go to 90%, you can go to 100%. Uh, the higher the number, the lower the hits. Country match, red flag. Red flag is uh, any of the red flagged common words such as atomic, nuclear, bomb, terrorist. You get the idea. Exact match is uppercase, lowercase. Everything has to be identical. And then uh, we have the outbound processes and then the inbound processes. So we have the ability to turn on or off some of the automatic screening. Screening can happen when you create a new record for a customer or a vendor, or if you modify or add or delete uh, a, an address. And then some of the processes are about uh, disabling you know, or blocking the confirmation of a sales order for a denied party. <coughs> this means there's a screening, there's a denied party found. You'll not be able to create a sales order or uh, confirm a sales order or process a sales order, all the way up to shipping products out your door. because a party can be a good party all the way through to the final step. And as you go to ship the product, party actually then gets added to a list of denied parties. So you have all the way up to actually processing the shipment as a final step to block and to prevent dealing with denied parties. This is the uh, one of the main screens that would be used by a uh, an independent auditor, which are uh, which is a role type that we have uh, in the system for the uh, the gateway to DPS product. So from here, he can see all of the denied party founds, no denied party founds, approvals, denials. So for any of the denied party founds that have not been uh, treated yet. He would then select that record and take a look at the details. This is the detail screen, so we can uh, take a look at uh, this request for Freedom Hawks. And um, you can see when that uh, request was sent and who processed that, uh, that request through which type of transaction. And then what are the responses? We see in this uh, particular example that there were four hits in three different agencies. So there is the uh, OFAC, there's the European Commission, and there is Her Majesty's Treasury, which uh, the list is the Consolidated Financial Sanctions list out of the uh, United Kingdom. Uh, we have citations and citation dates. Uh, this is from February 2007. So this gives all of the information that the auditor needs Apologize. to make an educated decision. So did the customer I enter in my business system, the actual denied party that's listed in the in these lists? If so, he can deny. If not, he can approve takes us to this screen here. So he uh, would then have the ability to approve or deny, provide a reason, and add additional comments if necessary.
So what's behind the product, right? So there's 80 plus global lists that are maintained by Blue Jay, uh, by, by Blue Jay personnel, uh, stored into the Blue Jay system. And this is happening on a daily basis. You can see from these lists, there are, you know, treasury, primary money laundering concern. There's federal bureau of investigation, most wanted, um, you know, foreign users uh, and users uh, of concern lists from Japan. So there are many of these lists. This is what we're hitting up against. The red flag che word check we talked about. Smart sounds like. So we're not just talking about here matching words, but matching sounds like words is important. <clears throat> So where's the value in it? Well, here's the top seven. Keywords here, embedded. Embedded screening within D365 FO workflows. You don't have to go off in another system. You don't have to go off in a separate menu item somewhere. This is directly embedded within your standard operations. Automated and manual screening options. You can turn them on, turn them off, define them how you want, how your business works. Independent auditor roles. So it's not the shipper authorizing <laughs> or your sales clerk authorizing uh, denied party lists. This is a specific auditor role. Prevent critical business milestones from being crossed. That's the stop this shipment from happening. That's the stop this order from being confirmed. Manageable allowed and denied party lists. So you can hook up a customer that's that's always getting a hit, but is actually a false hit. You can put him on the allowed list. So he's not going to be uh, scanned every time. Now, obviously, for the allowed and the denied lists, we have uh, batch processes that you can run periodically to validate that everyone that's on the allowed list or the denied list still belong in those lists. They might they might belong to some other list now, right? Full audit logs for uh, everything that happens and the content is owned by BlueJay. It's not a third party that we're going to. All right? And the final topic, final product to talk about is the gateway to TMS for shippers. TMS stands for Transportation Management System. And uh, Blue Jay Solutions has uh, a tier one TMS for shippers product in the marketplace. And uh, <coughs> the gateway to TMS for shippers offers a, uh, a full suite of, uh, of features and functionality to um, to not only hook up and integrate to the, the TMS for shippers product, but also to streamline processing within D365. So again, where are transactions happening? Where do things reside? Well, in this product's cases, it's actually in both. So you have order entry, you have financials, you have warehouse management, this is all happening in D365. And then all of your logistics, planning, execution, final miles is happening in the TMS for shippers system. And between all of these, there are constant interactions and updates between the two. These are, um, these are the integration touch points. So be it the order creation in D365, which it creates uh, a counterpart in TMS. When uh, TMS uh, ass assigns a load to an order, uh, that load detail, that load plan gets sent back to D365, and so on and so forth. All the way down to web settle, accrual, and miscellaneous charge, which are financial operations that are being sent back and forth between TMS and D365FO.
this particular screen that we're looking at is a uh, is a standard D365FO screen called the All Shipments Grid. But we've enhanced it with uh, some of the TMS details, the BlueJ TMS details. So you have the load IDs and the load statuses with the uh, with the number of stops on each of these loads. And you have some planning elements such as the TMS arrival date, departure, and uh, must depart by. And we have estimates as well. So we calculate estimate, estimated pallets, estimated weights based on configuration directly out of D365FO. What this allows to do, this allows the warehouse to properly manage and plan the execution and the preparation of shipments that need to go out the door. So this is very critical. Here are some of the supported features within the uh, within the product. So again, we have uh, automated and manual workflows that can be set up based on how your business operates. So we support uh, basic and advanced WMS, and they can be operated both within the same legal entity. And we do support multiple legal entities and each legal entity has uh, its own configuration set because how you operate in Canada does not mean it's the same how you operate in the US or in Germany and so on. So where's the value in it? Well, obviously, if uh, you wanted to build an integration on your own because you've purchased the uh, Blue Jay TMS for shippers, uh, you can. But you're going to miss out on a lot of things. Now, these uh, these four first uh, value points can be applicable to the two previous products that were mentioned as well, but they're very important. So, turnkey software solution. You don't need to do anything. Just install it, configure it, and use it. Leverage new features with each new release. Compliance with Microsoft's one version. Microsoft has a release schedule that is very aggressive. There's a minimum of 10 releases per, per year, which is a little shy from one a month. Cut down on implementation time. We use REST API real-time transactions wherever supported. There are audit trails for all incoming and outgoing transactions. This is great for traceability, and it's amazing for troubleshooting as well. There's a real-time online offline status check for web services and SFTP. Supporting features for the full order to cash process. So we talked about that, so that is um, whenever an order has been sent over to TMS and the TMS has assigned this order to a load and has tendered it out and that the tender has been accepted by the carrier. Well, at this point, or you know, at various different points, this is fully customizable. You might want to prevent people in D365 from modifying the order. You know, because that's not fair to the carrier. It's not fair to anyone in that full cycle. Uh, if uh, the terms change, um, so that gives you that flexibility to actually control your order to cash process. Queuing to support offline modes and configurable alerts at various events. Um, so you can set these up to receive emails or, or receive um, in-system messages. Uh, to your logistics manager, to your uh, IT systems administrator, when things happen, when when things happen, when stuff goes on offline or stuff is failing, you want to have them quick to react and quick to recover. Okay, that is the end of our journey together. I would like to thank everybody for taking the time out of their busy day to uh, come join this webinar with me.
Uh, again, thank you for your questions, for your interactions. If you do want to follow up, I have uh, my information up on this link here. And um, anything else, I just hope you have a great day and we'll be talking to you soon.